back with another video today we got Sabriel Matias the most dangerous boxer in the world it's on both screens without further ado let's get straight into the video and 20 brutal stoppages in his last five fights each man has retired on his stall unable to continue and one man on his record tragically lost his life you may or may not have heard the name but either way now you're gonna remember him this is everything you need to know about the most dangerous man in the sport right now Subrael Matias this guy is a very bad man very bad man Strapping. Yes, they only come along every so often. The Mike Tysons, the Golovkins, the Anuays, they almost look superhuman, not just getting the job done in the ring, but doing it in demolition style. It's pure brutality, pure ferociousness. You see that? It's true. I see it once Eric, in the blue moon. Some guys, they got like the... They got the magic eye or the golden heart or both, if you will. They main characters and the rest is just cast member extras. They go up against one of these main characters, they getting dropped off. Real light. David Ruffin from The Temptations, if you've seen that movie. They get dead bad. It's terrible. But yeah, Ina Way, that's one of my favorite fighters right now as well. Let's continue. And the opposition normally have that look on their face to say, bloody hell, I feel like I'm fighting that metal bloke from Terminator fucking 2. Yes, and this man is of that calibre. Tipped by Terence Crawford to be the next big thing. Going about his business relatively under the radar, but knocking on the door of the super lightweight household names. But the big question is, will they even be willing to... Let me know what y'all think, honestly and genuinely. Going against the, the people we just showed. Do you think he can beat them? Shout out to I fuck with Ryan. I ain't gonna lie. I like the power he the intent he set behind his punches. A lot of people don't have that. Or if they have it, they don't know how to unlock it to where they can use it at their disposal. He got that power to him. He punched you like you just killed his nephew, eh? Yeah, I fuck with Ryan for that. And that he he ain't he ain't scared. He ain't scared. He ain't running. He ain't setting clauses and shit, so. Yeah. I think Matias will whoop their ass, though. I'm not going to lie. Let me know what you think. Let's continue. The big question is, will they even be willing to set foot in the ring with him? I don't think they're going to do it. Let me explain why. Yes, so let me give you a little backstory of his incredible turbulent journey. Matias is a 31-year-old Puerto Rican fighter and current IBF super lightweight champion. He was no stranger to violence growing up on the tough Puerto Rican streets, falling into gang culture and fighting on a regular basis. And it was this rough lifestyle that led to him being shot at over 30 times by two gunmen back in 2012. Remarkably, he was hit by two bullets below the waist, but he survived. And although he recovered, he then found himself in prison soon after, serving a total of 19 months for reasons he doesn't wish to talk about. However, this was nowhere near the full extent of his difficulties growing up, as he has been quoted saying he's witnessed many people, even family members, killed before his very eyes over the years. But luckily, boxing gave him a grounding and a pathway out of that world. As an amateur, he never took it seriously, fighting drunk on more than one occasion. Occasion. But with the passing of his brother Yankel in 2015, he now had something to fight for. And that very same year, he made his professional debut. A first round knockout, of course. And now, here we are. Present day, his record stands at 20 wins and one loss. But as mentioned, every man he's faced has been stopped. The one loss to Ananya was soon avenged with the Russian retiring after nine rounds. And retirement seems to be a common theme with this man due to the onslaught that he delivers being too much to bear. Of his 12 official knockouts, only one has made it past the halfway stage of the fight. And the other eight that retired were likely on their way to that fate as well. Now you may be thinking, ah yeah, good record, but who's he fault? Well, considering four of the last five hey, fighters he yeah. retired were undefeated it really does show that he's no gimmick and some of you may also be thinking yeah but come on how come i ain't heard of him then well that's because nobody yes nobody is mentioning his name he's one of them fighters that the champions would consider to be in the who needs him club but he's not just in the who needs him club he's in the fuck that no thank you club the old i'll give that a bit of a royal swerve club i like my face not looking like a kebab when i get out the ring so i best not mention his fucking name for the time I'm being bruv club.
Yes, that club as well. He's the definition of the boogeyman. So yes, before we talk about his future, let's talk about his style. Well, he's got a very unorthodox style, as you can see. The low hand's never being known to be effective for a high punch output, but Matthias throws the rule book out the window, producing a regular flurry of combinations, sometimes over 100 punches around, barely leaving the opposition with any time to think. Now, to be fair, he may not look very scary with that little fucking poodle on his head, but the power is certainly scary. Again, unconventional, but he throws mainly arm punches. It's nearly all shoulder action. Compared to someone like Golovkin who produces his power from the hips, Matias doesn't wind up like fighters usually do, but in fairness to him, he simply doesn't need to. The punches are sharp, quick, and extremely heavy. I'll tell you what though, imagine if he did load up, you'd probably end up like that bloke at the end of fucking speed. <laughs> Bosh. Anyway, the onslaught is combined with relentless pressure. He may not be known for being a one-punch knockout artist, but the non-stop pace takes everything out of the man in front of him. Always come Coming forward and really finding himself on the back foot. However, that does open him up to getting hit now and again. He's definitely not afraid to take a punch, but it did become his undoing when he received a standing count in his only loss to Ananyan, a count that may have actually lost him the close fight, though some fans still thought he won the bout in spite of this. But yes, regardless of his openness, luckily he's got an exceptional chin, and although his defence is considered a weakness, the no-fear mentality only adds to the excitement of this thrilling fighter. So check out this vid from the Get double legend. Itself. At Skiller, who break down how good this man is a lot fucking better than me. Bosh. And it's a blinding channel, by the way. I ruddy love it. Now, unfortunately, the talent of Matias sadly caused unbeaten Maxine Dadashev to lose his life after their fight in 2019. When the bout was stopped after 11 grueling rounds, Maxine needed help getting out of the ring and never made it to his dressing room. At the hospital, he required emergency surgery for a bleed on the brain. But after being placed in a coma, his condition worsened, and on July July the 23rd, he sadly passed away. Bob Arum kindly paid for the funeral, and the generous fan set up a GoFundMe page that raised money for his loving family that he left behind. He was a rising star, an absolute credit to boxing, and died doing what he loved. Big up this legend of the sport, he will always be remembered in our boxing hearts. Now then, Matias picked up his IBF title against Jeremias Ponce back in February, which has done him a favour because without a belt, he probably wouldn't be mentioned at all alongside the bigger names, since he's such a risk with no reward. But the belt gives him sway to hopefully land a big fight in the near future. Though as we have mentioned, still none of the big boys have really called out his name. They know they will be in for a brutal night's work and unfortunately a smaller payday as things stand. But yes, ultimately, he poses a serious threat to Garcia who having struggled with Tank recently may find Matias to be Tank on overdrive. He will be absolutely unresponsive to Haney's power and serious pressure has been known to be a problem for Haney in the past, and the Lopez or Progre fights can't help but be wars. Again though, Matias being a different breed of fighter to anyone they've ever been in the ring with. So yes, it's gonna be ruddy exciting when he- Yeah, I like how he punch. It's like his his intent is set with it. From then he get shot with an AK or something, from that, from his brother dying, his loved ones dying, being incarcerated for whatever, a bunch of mental pain, anguish, Shit, even through epigenetic memory from your father and your mother's side, which make up of you today, basically whatever your ancestors went through, whether they was lynched or whatever. It's the reason why you got struggles and traumas, joys, pleasures, gifts, or even fetishes. It's a reason for that through your sales. Your sales are sales from your previous ancestors. So this lifetime, what he been through of hardships and his epigenetic memory and his will to show that he can be greater than what he possibly even perceived at a time about himself. So... I see that. You know how they say a picture says a thousand words? <sighs> if a picture say a thousand words, we'll do a recording, say, or a video. So I see the intent set with every punch he throw. Not to say ain't nobody been through nothing or these other fighters ain't been through nothing. Nah, we all got our struggles, but what he been through is it's more than the average person. And I feel like he got that on it when he come into these fights and opposed to the mother fighters that's fighting for... And then be trying to be smart about the shit. I get it. Like being smart and choosing your battles, but how they be having clauses or they be having reasons. Oh, he ain't big enough. Oh, he ain't going to bring that much money and have an excuse to no, snow. If you really the best, fight the best. So I fuck with Eno Way for that same reason. It's like how he punch you. Like you, you see the intent is set. 
It's like a lot of guys don't have that or they don't know how to unlock it to where they can use it at their disposal. You get what I'm saying? Because I see it once every in the blue moon. It's like Mike Tyson was one of them that had that. So, yeah, shout out to Matias. Hopefully he get us just due. They going to wait until he probably 38 if he's still in his sport by then. Uh, hopefully wanting him to retire so and then they can claim they, to, they scared to fight him for real. Let's continue, though. And he finally does get a crack at the big money fights, though we could be waiting a while. Either way, though, it's time to take notice of this man that because when he sets though. foot in the ring, you will not be disappointed. Yes, super smashing great. So then don't forget to check out the pod. I'm sure you won't forget. I mentioned it all the fucking time. But anyway, do check it out because you might get a little giggle. I'll see you. Man, I wish I would have did that shit early. I ain't have the luxury to do what I really wanted to do growing up. It's like I wanted to be like just competent and capable and sharp, mainly to protect the ones I, I, I care about. Because I've seen growing up since middle school, you see the little politics, you see the kids that's less fortunate get bullied just because they ain't have much. And you see the little, and I seen shit was fake from early on. A lot of my traumas, I just put it in the back seat. I don't think of it. I overcame it. How I get over it is, okay, it happened. Um... As long as my future children don't have to go through it, that make up for or even the time I felt like that was lost up to this point. It's a lot of shit I ain't get to do. A lot of time I felt like was wasted involuntarily. But yeah, I wish I would have got to do this shit growing up. I ain't get to do nothing I wanted to do growing up. But I just wanted to be a walking weapon. But for the righteous, though, where I can protect me and mine. And what I know, I can even bestow that same information and relay it to the ones around me. So where they can be competent and capable. And like a whole gang full of John Wicks, we competent with the guns, hands, whatever. Because this country is founded on blood, blood, drugs, guns, money, genocide, all that. When the nuclear fallout and the ashes, the dust settle, what do they do? It be a brotherhood, whether they for the evil or righteous cause. They come in there all with guns. A brotherhood that's on the same accord. They come in there with guns to obtain whatever the objective is. So it's like I always wanted to be that for mine too because I seen other ones get victimized. Yeah, and I wanted to do this shit growing up. I ain't get the luxury to be in. I ain't even had the money to afford this shit. I don't even know if it was terrible. But yeah, I can fight. I'm a natural brawler. I, I taught myself though. I'm self-taught. But, um, shout out to Matias. May he get his just due. Shout out to Inoue too. That's one of my favorite fighters right now as well. And yeah. <clears throat> That's it for this video. Don't forget to um, like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X. Formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick and Rumble. Before we start rumbling, I kick your ass and you end up twitching. You seen how Matias was doing them. You see how everybody ducking the smoke. You see how everybody got an excuse. You see how everybody implementing clauses. If you implement in the clauses, may Santa Claus come down the chimney and put you in that bag and put you. <laughs> nah, though, I'll see you on the next one, man. I'm out.